Two months later, I do apologize for the lack of content. Been busy moving from Louisiana to Texas. Those of you that are subscribed to my other channels, the gaming channel, as well as GB Raleigh Vlogs and the socials probably are already aware of the fact that Riley and I and the pets have moved from Louisiana to Texas. In case you want to know more, I'll leave the May 2023 vlog below in the description section. But it is my intention to get back to posting regular political content on this channel, especially since the 2024 presidential campaigns are starting to heat up. And we have a list of candidates and spoilers. Most of them I'm not really interested in. Actually, I think all of them I could really care less for. But we'll talk about them real briefly. This is from Wikipedia, by the way. For the Democrats, the big candidate most likely going to be reelected, or at the very least he's going to secure his nomination, is the current president, Joe Biden. He's not the only Democrat running for the uh, presidency, though. There are others. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., that's right, a Kennedy, is running the son of the late Robert F. Kennedy. And he ran for president back in the late 60s, and unfortunately he was assassinated. His brother, John F. Kennedy, was also president, and, well, some of y'all know what happened to him, too. So Robert F. Kennedy Jr. running for president on the Democrat ticket. Marianne Williams also running on the Democrat ticket. Both of them aren't polling very well against Joe Biden right now. Joe Biden still has a much higher commanding lead over the other Democratic candidates. The GOP has a lot more options, but let's be honest, most of them suck, including the former president, Trump, who is running once again for president. He has uh, some serious uh, legal issues happening right now, and uh, he is in the lead among the other GOP candidates. So there's definitely a lot of hardcore MAGA supporters out there who are going to vote for Trump, and they don't care what anyone else has to say about him, whether it's true or not. And it doesn't really matter if Trump ends up sitting behind bars or uh, at home in Mar-a-Lago in house arrest after all his charges are said and done with, they're still going to vote for him. Despite all the issues and problems that have come out regarding Trump, they don't care. But he's the leading GOP candidate at the moment. Behind him is Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida. He's down by, what, 20, 30 percentage of the uh, polls? But he is the, the second strongest GOP candidate right now. Other candidates include uh, Nikki Haley, along with Senator Tim Scott, Asa Hutchinson, Larry Elder, Vivek Ramasawa, and there are a few announcements pending regarding other GOP candidates, such as Chris Christie, former Vice President Mike Pence, Doug Burgum. And there are also other people that have declared or will declare a candidacy for president that aren't exactly going to be on the Democrat or the Republican ticket, independent or third party. That includes uh, John Anthony Castro, Perry Johnson, Steve Laffey, Corey Stapleton, and then some of the more interesting ones, Joe Exotic, Afro Man, a.k.a. Joseph Foreman, Kanye West, and Taylor Marshall. That, once again, is according to Wikipedia. I will link that below in the description section as well. So, yes, most of those candidates I have no interest in all of supporting. None whatsoever. And let's be honest, most of the Republican candidates, unless Trump ends up having something happen that forces him out of the running, whether it's the, the legal issues or health issues, yeah, they're going to have a difficult time going up against Trump and DeSantis. I haven't exactly been wowed by any of the GOP candidates as of right now, and I don't really have any intention of voting for any of them. And the Democrats, right now, it's basically Biden's uh, game to lose. He has a commanding lead over the few Democratic candidates that are out there. That's the way it usually goes for uh, like a president, like halfway through an eight-year term when they're up for re-election. Most of the time, they don't really face that much competition. Trump didn't really face that much competition on the Republican side in the 2020 election. 
He ultimately lost against Biden in the 2020 election. Trump, of course, disagrees with that, along with his most hardcore supporters. But it's just the incumbent usually has a really good chance of at least getting their party's nomination. So unless something happens to Joe Biden between now and the Democrat you know, like primary or the primaries and uh, the official convention, I guess that's going to be in the summer of 2024, Looks like Joe Biden is going to remain as the Democrat presidential candidate. My fear right now is that we're heading for a rematch, Trump versus Biden, and rewind a few years ago. I didn't want either of these two for Election Day back in 2020, and I most definitely don't want these two for Election Day in 2024, four years later. But at the same time, I don't want most of these candidates in the White House. Like, why can't we have, like, some decent options? Like, somebody that's not to the extreme right or to the extreme left. Now, I'm not saying Biden is in the extreme left category. I don't think he is. I just want a candidate that's somewhere in the middle, a, a moderate. But unfortunately, as of right now, it seems like What's popular on the Democrat side is to go far left and be progressive, even like somewhat uh, socialist. On the right, it's all about like MAGA and and, and God and and guns and America and like wrapping the American flag around you and worshiping the Constitution. Look, I hold the Constitution, the Bill of Rights and the, uh, the amendments with high regard. Those are the founding documents of our republic. But honestly, there are people running for office right now who are waving the flag and a religious book, the Bible, as well as the Constitution, who are only using it to get elected. And the truth is, if Trump was to get reelected, he already intends to violate the Constitution. He's already talking about how he's going to go after people that have like birthright. You know, if you're born in the United States as of right now, even if your parents are not American citizens, and if you are born in the U.S., say by immigrants, then you get to be an American citizen. That's the way it's been for the longest time. I believe it's the 14th Amendment that protects that right. And Trump wants to sign an executive order to go after that, which is basically a violation of the Constitution. The only way you can change that is with a new constitutional amendment, just like with what happened that caused uh, the Prohibition era. A amendment had to be passed for Prohibition to commence, and then a couple decades later, another amendment had to be passed in order for the repeal of Prohibition to happen. That's something that these candidates don't seem to understand, like Trump, for example, or most of our elected officials. You have to have amendments to some of these more serious issues that are brought up. Like, for example, whether or not somebody has the right to be an American citizen if they happen to be born here, even if their parents weren't. I think that they do have a right to be American citizens. That's just my opinion about it. And at the moment, the Constitution supports my opinion. And there's a lot of people that want to abolish abortion or make abortion legal across the country. And once again, I think that should come down to a constitutional amendment. And the same thing goes for what I would like to see, term limits and uh, age caps for uh, all elected officials or all bodies of government, not just the president, but also the Congress, the Senate, the House, and perhaps even the Supreme Court as well. That's just something I've been a champion of for a long time now, and I've made a few videos about that particular subject, ending the gerontocracy, if you will. Case in point, you have uh, Dianne Feinstein, who's clearly suffered from something a lot worse than uh, shingles. She's, what, pushing 90, being wheeled around in a wheelchair, and it's pretty obvious she's not really there. She should not be serving as a senator for the state of California. And I think a growing number of citizens in California and even a lot of Democrats want her to resign and retire. This wouldn't be an issue if we had congressional term limits, if we had an age cap. She would have already been forced to retire, say around 75 or 80 years old, or better yet, if we also had term limits, 
then a lot of these elected officials that continue to fail the American people time and time again on both sides of the aisle, by the way, would be long gone because they would have had to been forced out of office because, you know, term limits and age caps for the older members of the House and the Senate, well, especially the Senate. But going back to the uh, presidential race, I have no interest at all in Trump being president again. He would be the 47th president if he wins. So he was the 45th president. He would do something very similar to, to Cleveland. He would have two separate numbers. <laughs> Technically, two two different presidents, even though he's the same guy. It's kind of weird how it works, but... I don't want a Trump versus Biden rematch, but I don't really want DeSantis either. He's very low energy, and he's trying to stand on the right side of Trump. And I'm sick and tired of this whole left versus right war. And I consider both sides guilty. You have you know extremes on the left and extremes on the right that perpetuate the culture war, the, the woke, whatever you wish to call it or the extremisms on the right, you know, the racism, the bigotry, the intolerance. Why can't we all just get along? Why? Why do we have to have these differences that are tearing us apart? We're all Americans. We all come from different backgrounds. We all have different sexual orientations and different lifestyle choices, different beliefs or the right not to believe. But we need more things to bring us together. And I don't see a presidential candidate right now that can do that. Definitely not with Trump and most definitely not with Ron DeSantis. And I was kind of on the fence about Ron DeSantis a while back, but he's done a few things that I, I find very questionable, especially since he's so hard trying to put himself on the right side of Trump. I just, no, no, thank you. I, I'm in the middle, okay? I do have some conservative leanings. I have some liberal leanings, some libertarian there as well still. But I just am sick and tired of the far right, the far left. And I, I want a candidate that is going to focus on, instead of demonizing this group or that group, like call for us to, to sit down and in the middle and hammer out these issues and these problems. Like with most recently with what's going on with the whole debt ceiling thing. It looks like the crisis has been resolved for now and there was a big risk that we were going to go into default now there are individuals out there that think that going into default would be a good thing it will not be a good thing yes we are trillions and trillions of dollars in debt and that's not good either that's very bad and hopefully eventually we'll have people in congress and we'll have a better budget somewhere down the road hopefully that would somehow over a long-term period, lessen that debt. However, you want to make the situation far worse than it currently is for not only us, but for the rest of the world? Default would lead to an economic crisis, perhaps even a collapse. At the very least, a new recession, perhaps even a global depression. We do not need to go into default. So that that's something that a few people out there don't seem to grasp and understand how badly a default would affect you. You think gas prices and food prices and everything else is bad now? When the default happens, all that gets worse. Skyrockets. More shortages. More unease. More protesting and rioting in the streets. A default is something we definitely do not need. I don't like raising the debt ceiling. I'm not a fan of it. But the alternative is, unfortunately, way worse. That's just how I feel about it. That's just my opinion. So, yeah, there were definitely some elected officials that supported that idea, that default's a good idea. No, no, it's not, but okay. So we need people that are capable of standing in the middle or at least attempting to reach across the aisle and try to come up with solutions, compromising. There's nothing wrong with compromising, especially when you are supposed to live in a democratic republic, a uh, representative republic or dem democracy, whatever you wish to call it. I know these are different types of governments, but we have elected officials of different political parties, and I'm not a big fan of either political party. Most of you know this. I don't like the Republicans or the Democrats. 
But it is what it is. And we expect these elected officials who swear an oath upon the Constitution, who are paid by the citizens to do a job, to actually do their damn job. And all too often, they're just busy demonizing each other and name-calling and acting like freaking kindergartners. And I'm sorry to all the kindergartners that I'm insulting right now. It's just a joke. And, and there's clowns that have an R by their name, and there's clowns that have a D by their name. And I'm just fed up with it. Of course, I've been fed up with that for too long now. So, yeah, I really wish I could look at this list of the Democrats, which isn't many, and the list of Republicans, which is growing and pick somebody that I kind of like. I, I guess I, I kind of like some of uh, Larry Elder's points. I don't agree with him entirely. But then there's others here that I highly disagree with, especially some that are, I don't, I don't know. I'm just fed up. <laughs> and you wonder why I, I have trouble making political content, even though I do have opinions about things. My problem is, and I've said this before, I feel like a madman screaming into the wind all too often because I don't identify as a conservative. I don't identify as a liberal. I'm just a moderate. I'm just a guy in the middle who just wants somebody. I don't care if they're, they're Republican or Democrat or in the Ford party or in the pizza party. I don't care. I just want somebody who can stand there and say, look, you know, we have some issues. There's a lot of divisiveness in the country. I'm here to try and heal the divide. I'm here to bring the people together from across the board in the hopes of sitting down and treating each other like human beings again in order to hammer out solutions. Even if that means compromising here and compromising there, at least try and make some sort of positive difference and change. And I do recognize that there are things that need to be done. Absolutely. Absolutely. But at the same time, I do not want to see this country become a completely like socialist communist state. I do not want that. But at the same time, I don't want this country to become a religious theocratic state either. It should be neither. I want a country of and by and for the people. I want a country where every American has the rights to equality, freedom, liberty, justice, opportunity, if they're willing to go out there and bust their butt in order to achieve it, that's what I'm about. Working hard and studying hard and, and doing your best and being rewarded based on, on the work you do and on your merits and on your achievements. That's the kind of person I am and that's what I, I want America to be. Where everybody has the chance no matter what your background is, whether you come from a wealthy background or you come from a poor background, you have the opportunity to better yourself. You also have the opportunity to worsen yourself, too, because there's plenty that were literally born with a silver spoon in their mouth that, that spit out the silver spoon and completely ruined their lives and just threw it all away. But there's also plenty of people out there that were born poor, dirt poor, out in the country or in the hood or in a trailer park, or in whatever, wherever you came from, and rose up above the poverty that they were born in because they wanted a better life for themselves, because they wanted to do better and be better, because maybe their family wanted their children to have a better life than they had. So maybe they grew up poor and they ended up in a poor neighborhood or in a poor town. But they work hard. They bust their butt in order to provide the hope of a better life for their children. That's the American dream. And I, I want that dream for all Americans. It doesn't matter if you're black, you're white, Hispanic, Asian, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, Native American. It doesn't matter if you're, you're straight, bi, lesbian, trans, etc. It doesn't matter if you believe in a god or you're non-religious doesn't matter if you're conservative, liberal, libertarian, moderate. I just want a better country. And unfortunately, our country is represented by our leaders, by those we elect to office. And for the most part, our elected officials are awful. There might be a few good ones in Congress. Most of them suck. There's a reason why congressional approval ratings 
go down every single year. When was the last time we had a, like a Congress that we actually believed in, that we had high approval ratings in? I can't remember a time, maybe not even in my lifetime. And then to make matters worse, we have a, a president who's done some things I'm okay with and other things I'm not. But a president that a lot of us question about how much of him is actually still there and how much of his administration is being ran by committee or other like members of the administration. How much say does the current president have over his own administration? I would like to believe that Joe Biden, who may have had some health issues during the pandemic, is of sound mind and body right now because we always want to have a president of sound mind and body, especially during serious situations when potential war could break out across the world or any other catastrophe like a natural disaster or rioting or famine or, you know, like a disease like the, the pandemic a few years ago. But I, I do worry about his mental well-being, the fact that he is pushing 80, and then his top contender on the other side is also questionable when it comes to his mental capacity and his health, because he's very much overweight for a guy of his age. And he also is up there pushing into the late 70s. So you have two older gentlemen in their late 70s, most likely going to be our top two candidates again in 2024 as history repeats itself. And I know some people may think I come across as an ageist whenever I'm calling for age caps. I have nothing but respect and love for senior citizens. For example, my papa, who's still alive, fortunately, he's in his upper 90s. And I know that there was a time when he would have probably been a great leader. And he was a leader in, in business and in life and, you know, head of, you know, our family. But right now I, I wouldn't vote for him for president because he's in his upper 90s. He's not capable of running the country, even if he's a brilliant man. And that, that goes for anybody. Like my grandma who passed away. Like, she passed away back in uh, 2020, I think. And then, of course, like 2003, my granny passed away. And she was, like, in her late 70s. But my grandma, on my dad's side, my granny was on my mom's side, by the way. Granny was married to my papa. Fortunately, my papa did remarry after my granny died. Anyways, my grandma was also in her 90s when she passed away a few years ago. And I loved her, and I respected her, and she, she had a good mind and she also had a she was very wise but I wouldn't have voted for her to be president it's just that after after a certain point you just can't do it anymore you get past your prime and that's just the reality and, and the fact that we've had elected officials literally die in office like uh, that one uh, congressman in Alaska a few years ago he was like in his 80s and he was running for re-election and he died. Like, where was the term limits? Where was the age cap there? The same thing with Diane Feinstein. My cat Jadis, you know, bless her, my poofball Jadis, she's 16 years old. She is basically poof, hair, and bones now. And she sleeps a lot, and I know that she has far less days ahead of her. And when she passes, it's going to it's gonna hurt. So I cherish the days that she's still awake, still able to eat and drink and, and go to bathroom. She's basically in human years about the same age as Diane Feinstein. And I would say my cat is in better condition than Diane Feinstein because at least my cat can still roam around on her own even if it's very slow and she stumbles. She's still able to she's still able to go to the football and feed herself. She's still able to drink water. She's still able to to even go to the litter box, even though sometimes she doesn't make it to the litter box. So why do we have somebody like Diane Feinstein still in office? We have term limits for our presidents. Why don't we have term limits for Congress? And along with that, I think we should have age caps for our presidents so that Biden and Trump couldn't be allowed to run for president because we need some new blood 
running for, for Congress. And at all levels of government, the local level, the state level, especially the federal level. So, yes, in conclusion, all these candidates I'm not impressed with. And I don't think that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. or Marianne Williamson has a chance against Biden. I mean, I'd like for them to have a chance, even if I personally wouldn't vote for them, because I think that every candidate running should have a chance, a legitimate chance against an incumbent, no matter how popular the incumbent is. But yeah, I think that as long as Biden is still in the White House and something doesn't happen to him that forces the Democrats to, I guess, put him out to pasture and have Kamala Harris take over. And by the way, I was totally wrong about that, okay? I was predicting, here goes predictions, right? That he would only last half the first term and then he'd have to bow out and Kamala Harris would become president halfway through the first term, allowing her to potentially be president for up to, well, 10 years, according to the Constitution. That did not occur. So, plot twist, right? I just have no faith in most of these candidates. But at the same time, I know that I don't really have any control over who ends up getting the Republican nomination or the Democrat nomination. I wish we had the ability to have a legitimate third-party candidate, but unfortunately, the uh, Electoral College makes it extremely difficult for that to be achieved. I'm not completely against Electoral College. I just think it should be reworked a little bit better, and it shouldn't be all or nothing. Like, if you get, say, 60% of the vote in a state, you get 60% of the e-votes, and then the other candidate gets, say, 40 or 30% of the e-votes based on how well they did. That's the way I think the e-votes should be when it comes to the Electoral College. So yeah, that is the 2024 presidential candidates. Once again, Biden, Trump, most likely going to be on the ballot on Election Day, unless some things happen between now and then that change both potential situations, which could happen. Once again, Biden's in his upper 70s, pushing 80. Something could happen between now and then. Trump also in his upper 70s. He's clearly overweight. He seems to be having his own health issues. And he's also suffering some potential legal issues. So it may not be Trump or Biden. It may be Kamala Harris versus Ron DeSantis on Election Day. It may be somebody else entirely. Who knows? But at the moment... If we go by this list, which includes Biden, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Marianne, Tom, Marianne Williams, Lauren Trump, DeSantis, Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, Asa Hutchinson, Larry Elder, along with uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. If I'm not, I do apologize. And even if like Chris Christie or former Vice President Mike Pence gets in there, or Doug Burgum, or, or some of the other candidates that we mentioned, like Joe Exotic, Afro Man, Kanye Williams... Yeah, I just, I just don't know. I think it's still most likely going to be round two, Biden versus Trump. I don't want that to be the options for election day. But I look at all the other candidates and none of them exactly are wowing me right now. None of them. So I have very low optimism when it comes to the 2024 presidential election. Unless somebody just comes out of nowhere that just wows me. That's not happening at the moment. And I, I seriously doubt it's going to. But I hope I'm proven wrong. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Anyways, is there a presidential candidate out there who has announced their intentions to run or about to announce their intentions to run? Or let's just say they haven't announced their intentions at all and they most likely won't run. But if you had the power to pick somebody out there who obviously checked all the boxes and were capable of running for president and actually winning, they don't have to be a Republican or a Democrat. They could be independent or third party. Who would you support? Who would have your hypothetical support for the next president of the United States? Is it Biden? Is it Trump? DeSantis? Or someone else entirely? Feel free and let me know below in the comments section.